I have been on and off of Weight Watchers since they had those little slider cards. Do you remember those things? Way before the app. I've done Points Plus, Smart Points, Freestyle, and now Personal Points. And I've always been really successful in losing weight on Weight Watchers. The problem that I struggle with is keeping it off. And it's not because it doesn't work. It's because at some point I just get sick of tracking and I quit doing it. And then I kind of get back to my old bad habits again. So I want to move beyond losing and then gaining back the same 30 pounds for the rest of my life. Hello friends and welcome back. Today I'm doing an update on Weight Watchers. As I told y'all um, several weeks ago, I had started back with Weight Watchers on their personal points plan. Um, today I want to talk to you about how I'm doing with it and um, my plan going forward, some of the things that I'm doing differently this time, and how I want to make it a lifestyle rather than just getting to my goal and then losing steam like I have in the past. I do think that Weight Watchers gets a lot of criticism from people that count macros or do keto or something like that. It's been called a diet, but actually Weight Watchers is a lifestyle. At least it's supposed to be a lifestyle. I've never really treated that way in the past and that's why I've had the issues that I've had with gaining and losing. But I think in a lot of ways that it actually is a more sustainable lifestyle than like keto or something where you have to eliminate whole food groups from your um, diet and maintain that forever if you're going to, you know, keep off the weight that you've lost. So what are some reasons that Weight Watchers is a lifestyle? Well, in my opinion, it's one of the things is because it does encourage you to track your food. So you are taking note of what you're eating. You're noticing it and making changes. So you're counting points instead of macros, but since the points are based on the macros of the food that you're eating, it's basically the same thing. It's like a simplified version of counting macros. Um, and so it's, it's more than just calories. They base it on all of the aspects of the food, you know, protein, fiber, all of those things, sugar. So tracking the food makes you more aware of what you're eating. And then the healthier foods that you're eating either have zero points or low points, which encourages you to eat the healthier foods. And I think this is a big part of what makes Weight Watchers more sustainable is that even though the healthier foods are encouraged, you can eat anything you want to as long as you can fit them into your points, which I think that is kind of the key to making it a lifestyle. So instead of saying, I can't go here or I can't eat that or I can't do that like for the rest of your life, you know, being able to have some flexibility, I think is, is what can make it sustainable. Also, Weight Watchers now um, gives you points back. It, it, they go, some of these points go into your daily points. Some of them go to your weekly points, but they give you, um, they give you points for drinking water over eight cups of water in a day. They give you points for eating non-starchy vegetables because they want to encourage you to eat vegetables. And then when you eat more vegetables, you're probably getting full on those and not eating as much of other things that might not be as good for you. And they also give you points back for exercise, which those go directly into your weekly points. So I started back with the Weight Watchers personal points plan on um, March 23rd. So I had never done personal points. The last time I was on Weight Watchers, it was um, where you could choose either blue, purple, or green. And I was doing, I think, green, which was similar to smart points um but which i think is the one before freestyle and i was pretty successful on that so i was a little bit concerned about personal points and you know like how would it be for me since i had had really good success in the past pretty much every plan i've done with them i've had really good success but a lot of people had complained about personal points so i was a little concerned about how would it work for me so far i've been on the plan for nine weeks i've lost 17 pounds and honestly it's been easy so i feel like it's working great for me when you do weight watchers personal points you're choosing your zero point foods based on taking a quiz and the the more things that you choose to be zero point foods the lower your points are Okay, so right now, the way I have it set, and it, it's perfect for me, is my zero-point foods are potatoes and sweet potatoes, non-starchy vegetables, eggs, fruit, fish and shellfish, turkey and chicken breast, and corn and popcorn. 
And right now I get 21 weekly points and 21 daily points. All right, so one of the things I want to talk about is what I'm doing differently this time than how I've approached Weight Watchers in the past. Because again, my mindset is different. If I'm going to do this, I want to do it forever versus just losing the weight and then waiting another four years until I'm ready to start it again. One of the things that has been a big deal for me is I'm not doing fake food anymore. So in the past I've used like fake sugar or you know like sugar alcohol food or stevia or those things which I don't really like. Um, instead I just if I want to eat something sweet I just do it and I make it fit into my points so like I plan for it. I don't use like the fake cheese, the fat free, this, the low calorie that. I don't do any of that anymore. So if I'm going to use sour cream, I use regular sour cream. I just use less. If I'm going to do use butter, I don't use butter spray or margarine or any reduced fat, anything. I, I use regular butter. Um, and I feel like that is that just works better for me. I know some people really like to do things that are very low in points and that works better for them. But for me, I would rather have the real food rather than like its fake counterpart. So if I'm going to eat ice cream, I eat regular ice cream and I just track the points. I just eat less, make sure I know the amount that I'm going to have and um, track it rather than eating something like Halo Top or something that has sugar alcohols in it. And in the past, I have done that, but I'm just deciding not to do that now. So this is a really big difference from how I've done Weight Watchers in the past, and I'm hoping that it will make it more sustainable for me. So I basically have a new attitude with Weight Watchers, which is whatever I do now, I'm going to have to do forever. So if I want to actually maintain this, then any change that I'm making, I'm going to have to do it forever. So if I don't have any sugar then I need to do that forever. If I don't have any carbs then I need to do that forever. If I'm successful because I'm using low calorie, low fat, um, you know, fat, fat free, you know, sugar free, all of that, then I need to continue doing that forever or I'm, it's not going to be sustainable. So I'm just trying to do, you know, whole foods as much as possible and um, real foods as much as possible. And if they are things that are like, you know, have sugar in them, they're dessert, whatever, then I just have less um, instead of going for something that, you know, has stevia or some of the other um, sugars or sugar alcohol. So, you know, if you use that stuff, that's fine. I'm not criticizing your ability to use that stuff. I'm just saying that that's one of the main reasons why I have not been successful long term. So that was a major change that I needed to make this time. So another thing I'm doing that's a little bit different. In the past, I haven't really worried about exercise a whole lot, but now I'm trying to walk every day. Um, I'm not a big fan of exercise. So I do like walking and I do like riding my bike. So. I'm not basing my exercise that I do on like a gym membership or, um, you know, YouTube exercise videos or things like that that I know I'm not going to do long term because it's just not stuff that I like to do. So I'm basing it on walking and um, riding my bike because those are two things that I can do forever in order to maintain any weight loss that I have. With Weight Watchers, they do give you a step goal for every um, day and mine is only 5,500 steps. So I have changed mine just like in my own mind to 7,500 to 10,000 steps a day. So the, um, the, and I don't succeed with that every day, but I am, you know, striving for that and I do think it's a healthy thing to do. So I think it's good for me to do that. But the point breakdown for me, and I do think, I'm not positive if this is the same for everybody or if it's based on like your gender and your weight and your, um, you know, your age and all that kind of stuff. But for me, it seems to break down where um, if I get more than 2,600 steps, that gives me back one weekly point and it's two points for about 4,600. It's about three points for about 7,600 and about four points if I go over 11,000 steps. So um, I'm try my goal is to try to get at least three points every day um, on the activity points. Now you can do other exercises as well and if I do that, I do track that as well. 
but I don't want to base like my plan around like a gym membership or something like that that I know I don't want to do for the rest of my life. So I talked about the free foods that I have currently the way I've um, set up my um, you know personal points plan with the quiz and everything and um, so like I said I have potatoes and sweet potatoes, corn and popcorn. I did not choose avocado. However, I go ahead and let avocado be free. So that's not something that's included in my plan, but in my own mind, I do that. I just don't record it. However, I do have a couple of rules that I go by that seem to work well for me. One is that if I have avocado in a meal, I don't have potatoes or corn. So it's basically corn, potatoes, or avocado, but not two or more of those. Um, so I never have, um, I, I, first of all, I don't need a lot of avocado. So um, I might have it once a week and I usually have it in the form of guacamole. So if I'm having that, then I just make sure I'm not having potatoes or corn that night. And the same thing with corn and potatoes, I also don't eat those in the same meal. So I'll just have corn or potatoes and that works out pretty well for me. Also, I don't count my coffee in the morning. However, I have a new rule for myself that I feel like is a healthy thing to do anyway, and that is I only have one cup. So I don't care if I go to Starbucks and have a cup of coffee, which is something that I rarely do, or if I just make it at home, I have one cup and I don't count the points for the creamer. And this is um, not like a hard and fast rule that I've given myself, but because of the way like my body reacts and I get hungry, I really only usually eat two meals a day. I will say that that has made it way easier to do um, Weight Watchers just because I can have like a bigger meal on the two meals that I do eat versus having to use some of those points for lunch. I don't know why, but I'm just not really a lunch person. I don't really like lunch food that much. And also I don't really get hungry until like 10, 30 or 11 in the morning. And I was originally doing intermittent fasting because of that. I was doing like brunch around like 11 and then an early dinner around like 5.30. And that is the way like our whole family likes to eat like that. Although Sophie needs to have a snack in the afternoon and she also sometimes needs something else in the morning. That's pretty much what I've been doing and eating like that is the way kind of my body wants to eat, first of all, but secondly, it really does help with points because like I said, I have more points to put towards a bigger breakfast and a bigger supper, um, not having to worry about lunch. So that's been pretty successful for me this time. Um, in the past, I've always had to try to figure out like what to do for lunch when I really don't even want to eat lunch and then I have like a really small breakfast um, in order to accommodate the lunch that I didn't even want. So I feel like that's something that's helping me this time as well. Also, I don't usually use all of my weekly points, although it's not that I'm not trying to use them. I just haven't really been able to do that. I've only used them a couple of times and that's when it's been like a special thing, like, uh, you know, Katie's birthday, we had birthday cake and went out to dinner and stuff like that. And I needed to dip into weeklies and actually used all or most of them in order to, uh, you know, to facilitate whatever we were doing. Um, but typically the way I do weeklies is I try to use them in, um, so my weigh-in day is Wednesdays, the way I'm doing it. And then I try to do the weekly, extra weekly points on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So when I dip into those, it'll be those three days for the most part. And the rest of the week, I'm getting, you know, the blue dot. And usually even on the weekends, when I use the extra points, I'm still getting, um, a blue dot because I'm not using like that many. But I think that's one of the reasons that I can get away with not counting my coffee because I do have a significant amount of weekly points left over when I get to the end of my week. So um, a lot of times I'll have like between like 17 and 28 points left. And that of course includes the points from rollovers as well as um, the activity points or exercise points. I've also stopped eat, like kind of telling myself or saying out loud things like I can't have that or I can't go there or I can't eat there um, because I feel like that is not helpful and it's also not sustainable. So if I'm having to live a life where I feel like there's places I can't go, things I can't do because I can't eat that because of you know tracking or whatever, I don't feel like that's going to be sustainable for me and I know it won't be because it hasn't been in the past. 
So I am just saying, you know, I can do whatever I want to. I need to try to fit it in my points the best I can. And I've also, you know, I'm also okay with not losing weight that week. You know, if you need to switch it to maintenance mode, you can do that. I never really bother to do that, but um, a lot of times the way weight loss works for, for me anyway is I will lose nothing this week and next week I'll lose two and a half or three pounds. And then I'll lose nothing and then I'll lose a pound and a half or two pounds. So I just, I've just stopped worrying about stuff like that. The other thing that I've done that's different from what I've done in the past is I don't search out Weight Watchers recipes anymore. Um, I just find recipes that I think we would like or recipes that we've always used and I put them into the um, recipe builder on Weight Watchers and create the recipe. If I need to go in and um, you know lighten it up a little bit, um, I, what I'll do is maybe reduce the amount of butter that it uses or oil or whatever, things that I can do where I just cut back a little bit on the ingredients or have smaller portions rather than, um, you know, just putting in fat-free cheese or fat-free sour cream or things like that. So I feel like just not feeling the pressure to find these specific recipes and I don't know that anybody but me put that pressure on myself in the past but for whatever reason um that was like a big deal like in other words I would get tired of eating the food that I could eat if that makes sense because I was in my brain you know we had to have these Weight Watchers recipes and stuff like that and now we're just eating the food that we've always eaten I may not have rice if I don't want to count points for rice and my family may have it but uh, we're basically eating the same food that we've always eaten. And I don't know that my family can really tell that much that we're even doing it other than the fact that I tell them that we need to go walk on the beach more frequently. Those are some of the things that I've been doing differently this time with Weight Watchers that I hope will make this a lot more sustainable for me. I would love to have your input on this, especially if you do Weight Watchers or have done Weight Watchers or another plan that you find um, helpful, what has been helpful for you to make whatever you're doing sustainable, where you don't get into a cycle of you know, losing and then gaining back the same number of pounds over a course of you know however many years. So what's really helped you long term? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.